Well, good day. Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. I'm Clayton Schick, and this is the outdoors. And this is possibly some weather that hopefully is just gonna slide to the outside of me and not push me off because I wanna do some walleye fishing. Slip bobbers is the goal right now. Put some walleyes in the boat. So I got some weather moving here quick, so honestly, I'm just gonna start fishing. We'll talk about it as we go. But I do have the 360 out right now. It's turning right there in, I talked about in a previous video from Fishing Solutions. I love this, this is so slick, watch this. In, oh, I gotta move spots. Bang, out, so easy. Back in, bang, nothing to it, love it. I got the screw right here, I know if it's in the middle. We got right there, sorry, you can't really see it. I have the screw right here. So when it's in the middle, I know that it's pointing exactly the way it needs to be. So let's get a bobber out quick and start fishing and hopefully we don't get pushed off. Oh, bobber down. Nice, nice. First cast. Ooh, ooh, what do we got here? Might be a decent fish, I think. Might be a decent fish. Feels good. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Wow, first cast. Unbelievable, first cast with the bobber. And it's a good one. I have some weather moving in. I hope this isn't gonna be the end of my fishing. That's a good fish. Oh baby, oh come on. Oh yeah, that's a big one, baby. Unbelievable. First cast with the bobber. Mark the fish on the 360 out the front right of the boat, cast out, and bang, instant. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Slip bobbers for the win, baby. Love slip bobbing. That's a good one. Ooh, that's a tank. That's a tank. Easy, girl. One sec, one sec. Okay, maybe it's not as big as I thought. Maybe it's not a tank. Maybe it's just a nice one. I'm just very, very spoiled too, right? Like, very spoiled. Okay, <laughs> look at that start, baby. Look at that start right there. Lean female, probably spawned out. Oh, easy girl, easy. Let's get a quick measurement on it. Nice fish. Awesome, 26 and a quarter. 26 and a quarter. Good start to, uh, Slip bobbin. Hopefully the weather doesn't come in on me. Where are you gonna go? Right here, right? Awesome. See ya. So cool. Literally saw fish. Front right of the boat with the 360 cast it out and instant. What a start. Oh, bobber down. Bobber down. I was just I was just resetting up the camera and we got smashed up shallow. They're really shallow there, really shallow. Just like that, fish in, fish on, fish whatever you wanna say. He's just a little guy, but he was up shallow. I think it might sneak in a little bit tighter here yet even. Oh, bubble down. Nice. Look at the minnows there, lots of minnows. Speaking of minnows, this fish. It's the middle. This fish is also a minnow. Well, another little guy on a slip bobber. They're really up shallow right now. In like two, three feet of water probably. Oh, this fish right in front of the boat. Almost looks like a pike though, I'd say. That looks like a pike to me. Am I gonna get bit off by a pike here right away? Just watching the bobber, watching the bobber. Yep, yep, I knew there was a fish there, it was just small. I saw my bobber shoot back once though, and then just kind of go lay on its side. So he picked it up and was just swimming with it. Just a little guy, just a little guy. Go, oh, bobber down, bobber down. Nice. Nice. Doesn't 
feel that big. Ah, oh, it doesn't feel small. It doesn't feel small. No. Might be a good eater. Might be a good eater. I think I gotta net him. Should be should be a good take home take home eater right there. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I think it's good. Ah, he's it's just 18 inches, so he's unfortunately over the slot size to keep. So he's going back. He's like the luckiest fish in the world. He grew just enough this winter to survive for the rest of his life probably now. I think because of this wind's changed, I'm gonna readjust. I like fishing the bobber mostly so it'll like kind of drift away from you. A sideways drift can be hard because sometimes you have a bunch of slack in your line. And by the time you reel up all that slack, he could have felt it or dropped it or anything like that. So you can kind of drift away from you with the bobber, like say the waves are just going slowly away from you. So uh, spot lock on your trolling motor is a great option. An anchor, obviously the talon is a great option for me because then I can fish straight out the front. Anything like that you can kind of, uh, anything you can anchor yourself and then let your bobber float away from you is usually your best option. Not to say you can't do it like this. It's just away from you is always better. So now the wind, with it switching like more than 90 degrees since I first stopped here. And when I drifted, I let it drift down that way towards the shore there and caught that bigger fish. Now it's like coming this way. So I'm gonna go on top of that point and anchor and let it drift in this way. So we'll make a small adjustment here real quick. It seems like the rain is holding off, which makes me pretty happy. I'm gonna back out slowly and try not to spook these fish that are in this area. Not to say more fish aren't gonna cruise through here either, but there's no sense of just making a big circle here and driving right over them. Tailing down in 12 feet of water. Love it. Well, this spot hasn't been hot and heavy. I think I'm gonna make a move right away. It's worth it for that one nice fish. Not seen a lot on the 360 either. So we're gonna go up down, or up down. We're gonna go up the shoreline here and use a side imaging and see if we can find some pods of them because this is not uh, happening here right now. We'll get them. We'll get them. Mm, bobber down already? Yep, that did not take long at all. Wow. Nice fish too. Nice fish too, I think. First to the next spot. First cast, first drift with the bobber. Where is it? It's a nice fish. Come on. Come on. Let's give myself a little bit of leeway here so I can reach for my net. Pull him up. Nice. That did not take long at all. It's a decent fish right there. Decent fish. Too big to keep. For sure. Right there. Nice one, easy. Okay, back she goes. Just beside the boat here, four and a half feet of water, shallow, and that kind of drops off. So I'm letting the bobber just kind of float off of the shallow and it's hanging over that drop off a little bit and then the fish can come up and eat it. This is the game plan anyway. So I'll let it drift off and once it gets far, then I'll recast, let it drift, recast, let it drift over and over. And maybe at one point I'll let more line out and let it go farther off the edge, maybe more in that strike zone. But right now I'm focused for that, just that, just that little bit uh, when it first comes off that shelf. Oh, bobber down. Nice, got him. Got him. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. Tiny. But they all count. They all count. Thanks for participating in the bobber game today, my friend. Go tell your bigger friends to come out and play. So I just run straight eight pound fluorocarbon on my slip bobber rods. And the reason why I don't have like say braided line with some kind of leader, like a 10 foot leader or anything like that, is if you have some kind of line that's connected, whether you know like your main line to your, your leader material, your your slip bobber knot is not going to be able to slide 
all the way up and down, right? So you're going to be limited to what depths you're going to have. If you have it, say if you have a 10 foot leader and you have it below the 10 foot mark, you're only going to be able to go 10 feet. If you have it above the 10 foot mark, you're only be able to go more than 10 feet, right? You can't go less. So when you just run straight mono or fluorocarbon, something like that, it allows you to adjust your knot, your slip bobber knot so much easier. It's also nice having just a little bit of stretch too with the slip bobber. You notice I switched over to a longer rod, something with just a little bit more forgiveness because right now I've got a big bow on my line. So I don't want that fish to detect when I start to reel. I want that rod to have some give to it. And obviously the mono or the fluorocarbon has a little bit of stretch too, and it'll help out in that factor. But you could, you could get away with like a braided line for a slip bobber, something like that, I'm sure. But the, one of the biggest or the, one of the nicest things about braided line is its sensitivity. Well, you don't need to have any sensitivity when you're bobber fishing because you're just watching the bobber. It's as simple as that, right? You're just watching the bobber. Oh, and it just went down right now. And I'm trying to reel to it. I don't want the fish to feel me and bang. If that fish feels you too soon, he's just gonna let go right before you get the hook set into him. So as soon as that bobber goes down, I'm reeling as fast as I can, getting him out with my slack. And then just as it starts to tighten, I'll do like some kind of sweeping hook set on him. Just a little guy. But like I've said before, little guys have feelings too. One day he'll grow up and he'll come back and we'll catch him again. So I'm running leeches on my bobber today. Night crawlers will work, minnows will work. You can pretty much get away with anything. I just like leeches, I always have. They're easy to deal with. They're, they're a lot cleaner than night crawlers in terms of there's no dirt all over your boat. They're easy to put on. Yeah, and fish love leeches, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. This has turned into a beautiful evening with that weather that I had that was a little bit sketchy. Very, very happy with uh, what's going on right now. Bobber fishing is fun. Bobber fishing is fun. Bobber fishing is fun. I move my mind. Let me see fish here on the right. Oh, yeah, there, another one. Okay. Let's try this. Let's try this. This is good. We'll try a little bit off the right. We'll try a little bit in front. I'll uh, this fish right here. I'm going to cast out and then get the 360 out. Oh yeah. Casting out the slip bobbers. Seen fish on the right. I think my bobber, yeah, my bobber's going down slow. Something has it. There we go. My fish was super shallow. Really shallow, crazy, crazy shallow. Who says walleye can't go in like a foot of water? It's insane, insane, buddy. Oh, easy, easy. Well, one for the live wall anyway. One for the live wall. This guy will be going home with me, he's summer. Summer. One off the left. There were some in the front there. They vanished when that thing went around. There's one there, we'll see what happens. He vanished. Oh, stop it out. Nice. Way up there. Way up there. Pulling them out of the shallows, baby. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. Tiny. Oh. Front left here. We're gonna go front. I think we're gonna cut him off. He was there and then he's there. So I threw out front left. Hopefully I cut him off here. Hopefully. Oh. Got him. Nice. I was doing something a little bit different with this bobber right now. And I'll explain what I'm doing right away. I was marking a bunch of fish off the front left. I was casting shallower than what my bobber was set to. And I'll, uh, I'll give a demonstration here as soon as I get him in. But I think this is another one for the live bobber. Here. Let's 
Let's measure you first, buddy. Oh, we're good. We're good. This fish is gonna go in the live well and join his buddy. He will also be supper. Okay, so I noticed a bunch of fish and there's still some more there on the upper left here. So that way out there, I have my bobber stopper set probably at about five feet, maybe six or seven, maybe a little bit deeper. Hard to say for sure, but I'm gonna go deeper with it and I'll show you why. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing it out in the shallow water and the bobber will sit on its side because the hook is straight on the bottom and there's nothing, there's no weight to turn the bobber up. So what I'm doing is just kind of working it in like you would a jig, just pop, 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 and let it sit there for a second right on the bottom. Pop, 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 let it sit. And then right now when that jig is sitting and I have slack, if that fish pulls, that bobber is going to shoot under really quick. Or if he like, if he, if he pulls, if he hits it. So I'm still on the bottom. The bobber is flipped over on the side and just pop, 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 pop. Let it sit. I'm just dragging that bottom all the way out that sand. And if it gets to a point where the bobber stands up, I'll just let it sit there for a few minutes. And right there. Oh, I just missed him. I missed him. I missed him. I missed him. But it was right there. It's textbook. Throw another leech on and we'll try it again. Oh, I kept my leech actually. So it's like if the bobber goes under slow, your jig's probably snagged. But if it's like a sharp little pull, the fish picked it up. And I've got lots of fish up there right now on that upper left. Pop, 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 pop. Now, fishing just like a, a jig like I have in some previous videos, right? You can cast it out and pop it all the way in. Almost the same thing. This is more like a strike indicator though. And it's good when you're kind of switching off between like fishing shallow and then letting it sit for a little bit. There's two ways you can fish the slip over in that sense. So just wait till it shoots in and then you know right there that a fish just picked it up. There's more than one way to fish a slip over. This way I haven't messed with a lot, but I started to do it a little bit last year. and I was like, hey, that actually works. It's basically just like a strike indicator that people use when they're fishing uh, salmon or uh, trout streams, st stuff like that. There's another fish right there. Look at all this fish right there. So again, we're going to cast that. So now my bobber set. So if I have some fish out deeper, I can throw the bobber out there again, right? And just let it sit out there for a bit. So we're going to work it right here. Pop, pop, pop. And then just letting it sit there for a second. That, that jig will be tight to the bobber right now. So if a fish picks it up when it's sitting there, it'll shoot in. It's like, it's just a, a way if you're, if you're not really great at feeling the bites, you can watch your bobber shoot in and know that a fish picked up your jig. See, now my bobber almost stood up for a second. So that means I'm getting to the point where my jig isn't touching the bottom anymore. So you got two options. Let it sit there for a few minutes, let it bob up and down, or just bring it in and cast out again. And because I'm marking some fish up there, I'm not left up there kind of where I was before. Actually, they're a little bit more over to the right or a little bit more over to the left now. I'm going to cast out again. Bobber should turn to its side or stay on its side, I guess I should say. That means the jig's on the bottom and it's not, it's not off of the bottom. It's giving the bobber weight to pull up. Uh, oh, my bobber might have shot down at me as I was lifting my hat up because when I put my when I got my move my hand from my face the bobber wasn't there for a quick second this will work good like off of sand bottoms something that's hard mud will probably work too it won't work so much in the weeds because your your jig will just drag through the weeds but a harder bottom this works really well this fish I should be getting within the strike zone right here Should be money right there. Oh, yep, there. Went down to go look at the graph. <laughs> Looked back up and the bobber was gone. It's a very cool way to fish it. Especially if you lose your if you lose your wind and your bobber's not moving around anymore. Just give your give your give your ah, give your jig some action with your rod. This one looks like it might be a little too big to flip. So we'll net him. He'll be over the slot size and 
Yeah, nice fish. Bobber fishing is more than one way to do it. Strike indicator, as they call it. Okay, we'll measure you quick just in case you're under 18, which you might be. You might be. No, 18 and a half. So this one's too, too big to keep. He's over the slot limit. He's going back. I see my wind is doing weird things again. It's turning my bow. So I probably have some awkward angle here again to the sun. It's a great way to like find where they're sitting too, right? If you're getting hit constantly in one area, you know that that's where you can cast to again next time. A place that this won't work well in is rocks either. Dragging your jig just straight on the bottom without like hopping it at all is, is bad. You'll just get stuck under a rock, it'll be game over. Running a slip over when there's no wind can be pretty tough because it just sits in one spot. Jig has no action at all. Oh, right there. Just starting to pull it and the bobber just shot under. Super awesome technique. Little guy. Let's catch one more here after this fish and then go uh, go sit in an area where I have some confidence for a bigger fish maybe for the rest of the evening and see if we can catch a good one yet. Oh, head camera died. Sometimes they'll hit it like right when you go to start to pop it again. That movement. They could be sitting, it could be just sitting there looking at it as the jig's moving and as soon as it starts to gouge forward a little bit, that's when they're like, oh, it's trying to get away. Wow. Okay, I was gonna catch one more fish. I've got a horrible angle on the camera. Let's go to a spot where I've got some confidence for a bigger one and even maybe try this technique a little bit since the water's kind of glassing out right now. I've had a pile of fun with the slip bobbers today so far, but because it's glassed out so heavy right now, I'm gonna lay a lick on them with just the jig, the old jig and the leech a little bit, just dragging it slowly underneath the boat, behind the boat, casting out a little bit. We'll do a little bit of everything. I'm gonna kind of work a little bit of a sharp drop off here. Uh, it's kind of like, well, let's say, let's just call it, it's an old road. Okay, I've had a pile of fun with the slip bobber, but I'm gonna finish the day off with just the old jig and the leech. See if we can catch a good one. Some kids screaming on the beach having a good time, love it. You could say they're getting outside. That's a fish. That is a fish. Oh, little guy. Pull them right out of the water. Pull them right out of the water. What are you doing there, little buddy? What are you doing there, little buddy? I barely caught you, didn't I? Oh, this fish off the front right of the boat here. Up on the ledge. Let's cast up there with the 360, or I should say, I, let's cast up there with the jig. I saw them on the 360, right here, there's two of them. There we go, oh, got him, nice. Right up there, ended up being on that, on this, up there where I cast it anyway, right where I saw them on the 360, pitched up there, bang, nothing to it, right? Nothing to it. Oh, I should maybe not flip that in. Maybe not have flipped that one in, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're gonna give him a quick measure. This one might go in the. This one might go in the live walk. We'll see. Let's see if he's under 18. If not, he will get released. And if he is under 18, he'll be in the live walk. Nice. 17. 17 inches. So he's going home. Okay. Let's go after those fish right there and there. Front and right. calling it now. This is going to be the last cast. I'm going to score a fish right here. We're going to pack her in. Here comes a 30 inch walleye. Maybe not 30. Got him. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, it's definitely not big, but we, <laughs> we, we think we saw it on the 360 anyway. I don't know. The one I saw I thought was a little bit bigger, but I'm still learning size for sure. That will wrap up my day though. An awesome day, slip over, caught one. First fish was the biggest fish of the day. It's always the way it goes, right? 
and then I had a little bit of weather come in. And now I'm struggling trying to get this fish unwrapped. And yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, get outside.